The Marvel Cinematic Universe has already featured Norse gods, genetically engineered super soldiers, and galactic bounty hunters, but it hasn't had any magic, at least not the crazy psychedelic magic depicted in the Doctor Strange comics of Steve Ditko and Stan Lee. Well, that's about to change on November 4th with the release of Doctor Strange starring Benedict Cumberbatch. We talked to Adam Frank, the film's science consultant, about his experience on the movie and whether or not it contains any real science. So what is the science consultant doing on this movie? Well, the interesting thing about this movie, as you say, is that somehow they had to take uh, this very sciencey cinematic universe and get this guy who's got, you know, occult powers into it. And the reason I, um, I think I was asked to come in is that I'm a scientist, but I've had a long interest in human spirituality. My first book was on, uh, on that. Um, and that's how I know the director. And so the director asked me to come in to sort of talk about the ways you could sort of pull these together. And for me, what I suggested was that really it's about mind and matter. Uh, the, the big open frontier in science is the nature of consciousness. We don't really have a science of consciousness yet. Opening up the idea of this philosophical question, so more than just the Marvel Universe and science, it was also the Marvel Universe and philosophy. What is the relationship between mind and matter? And in that space, that open space, I think you can allow amazing things to kind of happen narratively. Are there things in the movie that you that you think when when you know our, our viewers are actually watching the film that you can say that's like something that, that really has that imprint on it? Well, I think certainly the and this is people have already seen this in the dialogue between um, the ancient one and Doctor Strange as he comes you know he's he's a neuroscientist who's you know been broken apart and and he's trying to find some way to heal himself and there's that amazing uh, dialogue between he and the ancient one and she's opening him up to this other vision of the world, that you're more, perhaps, well, in the movie, of course, you are more than just neural circuitry. Um, so that's certainly a place where uh, you know, this, this, this philosophical question comes, uh, comes up. And then also, there's also the question from the pure scientific point of view of the multiverse. There's a lot of multiverse in this, which is a scientific idea, which may or may not be true, but this, that there's many universes that have different rules I know our universe is just one of them, and I think uh, the movie does a beautiful visual representation of that idea. So I don't want to go too deep into this, but I also just find it incredibly fascinating. So I'll ask you a couple questions about the multiverse. A is like, so what is sort of the current scientific consensus on whether this is something that's likely to exist? Yeah, well, the multiverse is an idea that's really on the uh, way out there in terms of uh, the relationship between data and theory. It's just a theory, and I personally don't think it's true. I think okay. there's, you know, I'm, I'm not a big fan of the multiverse as a, the a cosmological theory. But it is a really interesting idea, and actually there's a number of different ways you can have the multiverse, right? You could have had multiple universes coming out of the Big Bang. That's a multiverse. Another idea, though, comes from quantum mechanics, which is the theory of the very small. And there, um, we've known for a long time that you know there's at least a theory that says every time a quantum event happens, the universe splits off into uh, parallel dimensions. So you can have multiverses made out of all of these parallel dimensions that are constantly splitting off from different quantum events. So you mentioned um, you know this idea of you know science and sort of consciousness. You know, I, I, it makes me think of, of a discussion in uh, the another Marvel film, Thor, about this idea of sort of like science and sort of magic being sort of like two words. And I feel like that's something I would imagine if I were a scientist, I would get very kind of nervous when people sort of talking in this kind of new agey way about that. I mean, can you talk just a little bit about how you look at that? Well, you know, I think, you know, if we're talking scientific ideas, you know, you always want to be absolutely grounded. If you're a scientist, you have to be grounded in the relationship between theory and data. But when it comes to consciousness, we don't have anything like that yet. I mean, some people would argue that there would. But really, a lot of the frontiers of the question of consciousness come down to uh, philosophical questions that we're still working out. So in particular, when we think about science, we often think about the, the reductionism, right? That you are not, I can reduce you to nothing but your neurons. And your neurons, I can reduce to nothing but your atoms. And that is a philosophical view. It's not a scientific view, it's a philosophical view. And so this, uh, you know, there are certainly ways of thinking about science where there are emergent properties, that some things that happen in the universe uh, are, are not just from the atoms. There's actually new laws that emerge as you get lots of atoms together. So mind may be something like that. Mind may be an emergent property of, of matter, and it's not, everything about mind is not encoded just in the atoms. So uh, in that way, the movie is actually opening up a very interesting philosophical problem, which has been around for quite a while.